Hey, my name is Wyatt Durrett. I'm with Yesterday's Wine, and I wrote the song Seven Oceans with Busby. Don't worry about tomorrow. I know we'll make it through. Cause I'll walk the desert, swim the seven oceans if it let me to you. Um, Seven Oceans is one of my favorite songs I've ever been a part of. Um, the message and the way it drives and stuff like that. Um, it was, I was out in Los Angeles writing. Uh, my wife was out there with me. I was out for a week writing. And um, we had been going through some stuff, not together, like between the two of us, but, you know, the world against us, against us kind of thing. I was, I guess, in a musical breakup of sorts, if, if you want to call it that. Um, and, you know, we we're worried about our future a little bit. And, um, so that morning she went home, um, and it was actually that evening she went home and I had the hotel room to myself for the first time. And the first, pretty much most of the first verse and, and melody came to me and some of the chorus, the first couple lines of the chorus. Um, and it was just the idea of, I wanted her to know she wasn't alone and no matter what happened, we'd get through it together. It was kind of the message behind the song. So the next time he was writing with Busby, the one and only Busby. And so I knew he had to bring something something big to the table. Um, and that was my idea. And I kind of, again, I'm the kind of writer that writes with melody in mind. They, they kind of, because I don't play, they kind of come at the same time for me. I think in the beginning out of survival and then it just started to be the way I write, you know. So I kind of heard it in my head. Um, and Busby, which nobody's ever done to me before, because he was just as much a track guy as he would. The guy could play every instrument as well, but he was an amazing track guy as well, an amazing producer. Um, just started playing, just started listening to what I was saying and started building a track and adding instruments to it and kind of poking the bear and going, what else would you say? And how does that make you feel? And kind of being produced for the first time in my life, you know? And, um, and I loved it because he really immersed me in the song and the lyric, and I think he knew... I needed to write a song that day about that particular thing to get it off my chest. And he kind of knew just to add and add to the fire and just kind of get out of the way and let me say it. Um, and it, and he really pulled, he pulled it out of me that day and pulled great out of me that day. And I, I'll forever thank him for it, man. He was that kind of dude as a person, he pulled good out of you as a person. And then as a writer and a singer and all that stuff, he did the same. And that's what I think people, on that level, whatever it may be, as a producer, a person, a man, whatever it may be, that's that's what he did that day, and it was it was awesome. It was awesome. I'd never had it just yanked out of me like that before, so it was really cool. <laughs> well, it was the first time I really I sang maybe a couple scratches in a studio ever. You know, I was always in the studio, but I was the guy saying, "Hey, phrase that this way," and never on the mic, never getting quote unquote produced. I was kind of the guy going, you know, word it this way or phrase it this way, somewhat producing myself, I guess, a little bit. Um, but it was the first time, like, I probably was the first time I'd ever sung, and he made me sing the song probably 30 times. And, and, you know, I was just like, what is going on? Like, but he was like, you got to portray, again, he, one thing I learned from him, too, was portray the emotion of the lyric, portray the emotion of the instruments that are happening. Get that across in your voice. Listen to the words you're actually saying. Be emphatic on these certain ones, and just attention to detail in that way, which was, which was huge for me. And then, again, the whole demo process, you know, I just was impatient and wanted to hear the song because I thought it'd be really good, um, and it was well worth the wait, man. He goes, I, he was like, "There's a certain fiddle player I want playing on it. There's a certain drummer I want playing on it," and he just made sure it was uh, it was meticulous in the way it was supposed to be, and and every person that heard it was blown away by it, and a lot of that has to do with him for sure and the time he took to make sure we got it right. Keith Stagall was another one talking to him. I played him Seven Oceans, just saying, "You need to make an album." For no one else but yourself, like show your version of these songs, show your form of, the, you know, your your form of your art kind of thing. Um, and then getting the confidence with Levi and starting to do it was kind of it. And then Levi just brings so much um, because we share the same brain. He just brings so, obviously, the musicality from the guitar to the fiddle. He just brings so much and his harmonies and just understanding music and his real passion for it. Um, I think comes out because it's a really passionate song, and for that particular song, it you know he he just brings that out and it, like he does in all of them and, and lyrically we really inspire each other and drive each other and admire each other and we kind of chasing the exact same thing when it comes to them. Um, it was kind of a culmination of all that, and then with Seven Oceans being pushed, saying you need to be the one singing this, 
and taking the approach that we can make this album doesn't mean these songs can't be cut by somebody else, but let's just go have fun and make them ourselves. So Chris Gelbuta, who produced that one and Must Have Been an Angel, the first two songs that we released, it was the reason he said to me, he, like, he loved Must Have Been an Angel and because we had already decided we are going to have three different ones produce two songs each. We ended up adding one more song with Daryl Scott, but um, that was the song that goes, I want, he was like, I want to produce this song. This song, for whatever reason, really has struck a chord with people off the bat, and us, because it doesn't really sound like anything else, kind of. It's a mix, you know, the, just the, you know, genre-wise, you can say it's Mumford & Sons to Garth Brooks, depending on how you produce it kind of thing, you know? Um so that was a lot of it was just his his love and people's love for the song. And it just, every time somebody hears that song, it always struck a chord. Um, and I think a lot of it was for me to be the one who sang it is it kind of is in the real sweet spot of my voice. My voice can be gravelly and, and stuff like that. So it really lands with the way I sing it. I think the way I put the song across to people um, makes them get it a little more and makes them grab a hold of it a little more. So I think for all those reasons, it was it was always the first one we kind of knew, you know. But, um, you know, people, it's kind of cool where we go play now. While the crowds aren't that big, they know that song and they know all the words, which is really cool to be the one that let it out myself, you know, or ourselves kind of thing has been really cool to watch it grow. Um, and then, the, you know, that there's a lot more of them now and that we can play a whole show of our songs and people are coming to hear that. You know, it started been lucky enough to have a lot of hits with other people so you know those are salt and peppered in throughout the throughout our sets but it seems the further we go on the less of that we have to do because people are coming to see yesterday's wine instead which has been really cool if it led me to you i swear i'd walk the desk swim the seven oceans if it led me to you